Bahashim, Yahawashai, Waha, Bakakwadash. In Hebrew, that's giving all praises to the Most High, whose true name in Hebrew is Yahweh, in the name of his only begotten Son, whose true name in Hebrew is Yahawashai, and the Holy Spirit, which is the Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles and the Holy Spirit who taught us his truth. Honor to the brethren that's laboring doing the work to push the gospel, risking their life and freedom to do so. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect, which should be the one third of the true Israelites. The Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians who make up the lost 12 tribes of Israel, who will be returning back to the Most High during these final moments by hearing and believing on his word so that he will have mercy on us in judgment. We back with another lesson through the power of spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. This lesson is gonna be titled, Why Would the Lord Leave His Inheritance to Strangers? Dot, 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 would you? Question mark. So yeah, would you leave your inheritance left up from your grandparents, your parents? Would you give that to strangers? that means you get a smaller portion. And those who got property, who got money, would you leave your inheritance to strangers? That mean your children or whoever you leave them to, that mean they would get a smaller portion. And the answer to both of those questions is no. Nobody will give their inheritance to strangers, to other people. You know, that's just, how the world works. A hey, same thing with the Lord. He's not going to give his inheritance to other people. Because one thing we got to know, the Lord does have an inheritance. And that's what the Christian church often leaves out. Just preaching that anybody can receive the Lord's promises and blessings. No, the Lord got an inheritance laid up for a special group of people. That would be his people Israel. So, we're going to do a little bit of reading over here to the right real quick. We're going to get the first two paragraphs. Not just the rich and famous fight over family inheritances. And, you know, when you watch TV, families fight over the, over the inheritance. Or when you watch First 48, you know, you find that couples got life insurance policies on one another. And then one spouse will kill the other spouse to receive of that insurance money, which is an inheritance. So people get dirty and grimy over inheritances. The death of a loved one is an emotionally difficult and traumatic experience for any family. Far too often, regular families now find themselves locked in arguments over the inheritance. In this Bible, the blessings and the promises, that's an inheritance as well. And even to this day, uh, the families of the earth, the 18 nations that the Lord created is fighting to receive of this inheritance that's only laid up for his people Israel. Some family inheritances fights turn into lawsuits. Some family members get so angry that they don't talk to each other ever again. And that's what this ministry stirs up. We claim it to be the people and that the Lord's inheritance is only for us, leaving out everybody else. <clears throat> so this ministry stirs up a lot of hate, strife, and envy. You know, for those who not included in his will. When siblings, second or third spouses, in-laws, and business partners are added to the equation, the family disharmony and, and bitterness can last for years. Yeah, so... Really going way back to it, who are the people who get upset the most? Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. He was left out of this. Going back to Genesis, the 25th chapter, the 27th chapter. Well, they bitter. Deep down inside, they know they don't deserve this. That's why people get bitter. That's why the other nations get bitter. You know, because they, they got left out of this. It's not for them. <clears throat> so first we're going to get the book of Matthew 1 and 21 and she shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Yahweh Shai which it would be in Hebrew for he shall save his people from their sins so again he will save his people his people Israel from their sins 
And this is part of the Lord's inheritance laid up for his people, that they got the gift of forgiveness and repentance to receive of the kingdom of heaven, even salvation itself. That's part of that inheritance. So we see up and down that Yahweh Shah is only coming to deliver blessings to a certain people. And that's just like anybody in the world. When they on their deathbed, they get older, they make a will. They want their children to have uh, the best um, soft landing, the most cushion, um, the most benefits. So they leave a will strictly for their children or whoever else that they want to receive or their inheritance once they pass. And likewise, the children, the people who receive that inheritance, they don't want to share it with nobody else. They want the biggest portion possible. So our people Israel, that's trying to save the other nations, beginning with Esau, Edom, why are you trying to split your inheritance with other nations of people? When the Lord not even trying to share his inheritance with other people, that's an insult to the Lord. As well as it will be an insult in the world when somebody laid up a will for a specific group of people and you trying to bring other people in on that. That's an insult. Now we're going to get Hebrews 9 and 15. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament or New Covenant. That by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first law or the first covenant. Who was under the first covenant? Only his people Israel. So when we go back and we see, <clears throat> they shall bring forth a son, thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai, for he shall save his people from their sins. How would his people be saved from their sins? That would be through his death to be covered by his blood. So Yahweh Shai was born to die for his people. Going forward for the redemption of the transgression. What's transgression? Sins. So we will be redeemed from our sins, speaking of those who are under the first covenant, under the law. They which are called might receive the promise of the internal inheritance, who was called Israel, um, Isaiah 41 and 8, Isaiah 45 and 4. It's Israel who was called to receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. So this is a big inheritance. And I actually missed the spot real quick. Let's go down a little bit. High value estates. It's about money and feelings. If the estates have little to no value, the odds of large unresolved inheritance issues are minimal. So if the inheritance that's left up is of little to no value, there's not gonna be that much conflict over it. However, the more valuable the estate, the more valuable the inheritance, the more likely there will be a battle over it. So this is a big inheritance. <clears throat> this is a big estate. This is an eternal inheritance. This inheritance not going to ever fade, diminish, or pass away. And because of how valuable it is, that's why all people try to battle over it and include themselves in it to receive of it. That's why... The most biggest heated disputes, arguments, and disagreements happens over the Bible because the people realize what's at stake and our people don't. Israel do not consider. <clears throat> so moving forward for where a testament is, what's another word for a testament? Well, it would be a will. There must also of necessity be the death of the testator. Now let's look up this word testator. Mm. Bear with me one second. Dang. Here we go. Testator, a person who has made a will or given a legacy. So yeah, a will, your legacy will be passed down to those who will receive the inheritance. Your legacy, your possessions will be passed on to them. All right, <clears throat> so let's continue. <clears throat> For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. 
what's the will, what's the legacy. In this case, it would be the blessings and the promises written in this book. The things that must come to pass after the death of the testator, which would be Yahweh Shah. <clears throat> the book, the Bible, is his will. Things that must take place after his death. For a testament or a will is a force after men are dead. So yeah, when a man is alive, but he leaves a will or a testament, is no effect. But it goes into effect once he dies. Otherwise, it is of no strength. It's not in effect at all by the testator liveth. So we couldn't receive of the gifts and the promises until what? Until the testator, Yahweh Shah, would die. That's why, back to Matthew 1 and 21, he will save his people from their sins. And that would be through his death. His blood be shed to cover his people. So we got a couple screenshots that I'm going to pull up. Bear with me one moment. Found it. Okay. So we got what does a will do? <clears throat> Generally speaking, a will is a legal document. This Bible is a legal document that coordinates the distribution of your assets after death. What's the assets, the gifts, and the promises written in this book? And how it will be distri distributed, meaning who will receive of these gifts and promises written in this book after death of Yahweh Shah and can appoint guardians for minor children. So, yeah, the Bible um, is a will that discusses the promises that will be left up for certain people in the earth. Now, let's go to our next screenshot. The will specifies who will receive what. <clears throat> and the Lord does um, list in his will concerning all the nations, you know, their final end, you know, what their inheritance would be. A son would be um, everlasting rulership here on the earth. A others would be perpetual slaves in the kingdom of heaven, the other nations. A Esau Edom, the so-called white man, his will will to be going to captivity, then be exterminated from the earth. So the will specifies who will receive what to distribute everything evenly. Well, in this case, in the scriptures, Yahweh Shai is not distributing his blessings and promises evenly between all people. It's only Israel or Jacob who will receive all the promises written in his book. One can simplify list beneficiaries <clears throat> if certain items are left to be if certain items are to be left to certain people that must be spelled out in the will the lord states plain and clear who the gifts and promises will be laid up for and we're going to get into that for the inheritance process to begin a will must be submitted to probate yeah what's the will that was submitted and approved the holy scriptures so let's continue. And when it says that certain items are to be left to certain people, that must be spelled out in the will. Well, the Lord was very specific in Romans chapter 9, verse 3. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Hamashiach for my brethren. So Paul is speaking concerning his brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. So this is a certain nation of people. This would be a certain bloodline, the people of Israel. So again, my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth, to whom pertaineth, meaning things that pertain or belong to the nation of Israel. So again, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption. So the adoption is only for the people of Israel. And the glory was that the kingdom of heaven and the covenants, covenants with the S, old and new covenants, and the giving of the law. It was only given to Israel 
and the service of Yahweh. Only Israel can serve Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And the promises, everything written in this book. Whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh of Christ came, who is overall. God bless forever. Amen. So Yahweh Shai only came for, for the people of Israel. So the Lord stated plain and clear that what items or what blessings are to be left to certain people. All other people outside of Israel was left out. And that's make perfect sense when you read the whole book. Because this ain't no new idea in the New Testament. This is how it's been from the beginning, even going back to the Old Testament. That's why when you come to Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 9, for the Lord's portion is his people. So who is his people? Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. So Jacob or the children of Israel would be the lot, would be the people to receive of the Lord's inheritance, the blessings, the promises written in this book. What we just read in Romans uh, 9 and 4 concerning the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the law, the services of Yahweh and the promises even Yahweh Shaiho Mashiach coming in the flesh to die to save his people, that's for Jacob, who is a lot of his inheritance. So the children of Jacob, the children of Israel, will receive of the Lord's inheritance upon his death. So we're going to read this in the NLT as well. For the people of Israel belong to the Lord. So that's why it says the Lord's portion is his people. A portion is something that belongs to you. It's your share. So Israel belongs to the Lord. Jacob is his special possession or the lot of his inheritance. So Jacob is a special possession unto Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Just like in the world, you got adults who with their special possession be, it will be their children. That's why Psalms 82 and 6, Yahweh Shah told his disciples, I have said, ye are gods. Well, yeah, 82 and 6, the Lord said, you are gods. Yahweh Shai repeated that in the New Testament. So we children of the Most High. We his special possession to receive of his gifts and promises that would be left up to us after the death of Yahweh Shai. So when we see that for the Lord's portion is his people, let's get this word portion in the blue letter Bible. Portion. It reads territory. It reads share. It reads part. And who would the Lord's portion be? Israel, Jerusalem. That's the territory that the Lord is claiming for himself. Not necessarily just because of that land, because the people Israel who inhabit that land. So portion, share, one's portion, one's possession. So yeah, the Lord's portion, his share is his people. Then coming down, it reads, prop, it reads inheritance, partake portion. So it's Israel who will partake in the Lord's inheritance in the blessings talked about in his book. And that's why when we come to Luke 12 and 32, it reads, fear not little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Who's the Lord talking about this little flock? Well, going back to Romans 9 and 4, it speaks about the promises. Paul said that pertains to Israel. So let's read it. Who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law, the services of Yahweh and the promises. The kingdom was something that was promised in his book, not to all people, but to his people, Israel. Because remember, going back, um, Deuteronomy 32 and 9, for the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. So it would be Jacob, the children of Israel, who would receive the kingdom. That's that little flock. It's proved further, furthermore when we go to the book of Ezekiel 34 and 30. Thus shall they know that I, Yahweh, their God, am with them, and that they, 
even the house of Israel, are my people, saith the Lord Yahweh, and ye my flock. The flock of my pasture are men, and I am your God, saith the Lord Yahweh. So the Lord is speaking to the house of Israel, and it says, you my flock, meaning you Israelites, you are my flock. And the Lord says the flock of his pasture are men. So going back, when we see fear not little flock, that would be the men of Israel. It is our heavenly father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. And the kingdom begins with the things written of in, in this book. This is the path to the kingdom, beginning with this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. All right, and then that's moving forward. We're going to go to the book of Psalms, chapter 2, verse 8. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. Who is the Lord's inheritance? Jacob is the lot of his inheritance, his people Israel. So Jacob, the children of Israel, is going to inherit all people in the earth. For what? For servants and handmaids in the kingdom of heaven that was promised to us. Going back to Luke 12 and 32. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. We're not going to just have an empty kingdom. It's going to be a kingdom with people in it. That's what we're going to inherit it. And not only just the kingdom, but the entire earth and beyond. So moving back forward, ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. And this is promised to Jacob. So the Lord going back, Luke 12 and 32 says, your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. This is nothing new being spoken of in the New Testament. It was spoke of of old in the Old Testament, pursuing the Deuteronomy 32 verse 9. And Psalms 2 and 8. Let me finish it. Ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. That's the other nations of people who would not receive the kingdom of heaven, but they would be in the kingdom as slaves and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. So inheriting the kingdom that the Lord promised to his flock, ye men of Israel, well, that kingdom includes the people and the earth in its entirety. So the pe so the earth Everything in the earth, the resources, the animals, the lands, most importantly, the people, is going to be our inheritance, our possession. Because remember, Jacob is a special possession. The Lord is going to give the earth to us. So this is the significance of the Lord having an inheritance. You know, these gifts and blessings is laid up for certain people. And I had an Edomite tell me that. I diminish the value of this book, that I diminish the value of the blood of Yahweh Shai by saying it's not for everybody. Well, that's according to scripture, first of all. And then if something is for everybody, it's not that valuable because anybody can get it. But what makes the blood of Yahweh Shai and the promises written in this book a special treasure Highly valuable because it ain't for everybody. <clears throat> so if I go give everybody in my job $20, it wasn't really that special. Everybody got it. But if I give one person $20, that's going to be special to them because I could have gave it to everybody. The Lord could have picked any people to give his inheritance to, but he chose Jacob, the children of Israel. So that's what makes it that much more special that it's not for everybody. Because like, this is a gift. If I give everybody a gift, it ain't truly a gift. That's just community service. That's charity. Well, the Lord didn't leave up his promises in his book for everybody. It's only for his people Israel. That's all he's concerned with. <clears throat> all right. So when we see that the Lord is going to give us the heathen and the earth for our inheritance, Let's look up this word inheritance in the Blue Letter Bible. Let me look for that. It reads possession, property, heritage. So, yeah, um, coming back to Psalms 2 and 8, the Lord is going to give us the heathen for our inheritance or for what? For our property. That's going to be our heritage, our legacy to inherit the heathen. And it reads property, portion, share. So, when we see that... Jacob is his inheritance, the Lord's portion of his people. Well, 
the Lord is going to, our portion is the earth and the people. The other nations, they ain't got no portion. They ain't got no share in this. They're going to be blessed by being part of our blessing. That's why the scriptures say, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. They can rejoice not being under Esau Edom no more. Then when we look at this word inheritance, when we, let's see. Yep, we see heritage. Now, let's see if I can find this word heritage real quick. In heritage, it reads property that is or may be inherited. What's the property that's going to be inherited? Well, the earth and the people in the earth. Going down to reads value objects. That's his book and qualities such as cultural traditions. What's the cultural traditions? This heritage that the Lord gave us that we discontinue from the law, statutes, and commandments. It reads unspoil you countryside. That's land. Well, the Lord gonna put us back in our land. He laid that land up for us and historic buildings that goes into the land that have been passed down from previous generation. So this book, the law, statutes, and commandments in the land is real Jerusalem. That was passed down through many generations, given from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. We had all that taken from us, but we got the book restored back to us. Now we returning to our cultural traditions. And with that, the Lord gonna put us back in our land, but give us all people in the earth for our possession, for our inheritance. Now, let me see what else we got. Well, we got this word possession in the Blue Letter Bible. So when we see that the Lord will give us the earth for our possession, possession literally means property in the raised land. So we're going to possess all lands, all lakes, forests, waters, oceans. We're going to own all of this. Then when we come down, it reads a possession, especially of land. So this is what we will receive of. Now, there's something that I'm looking for real quick. Bear with me real quick. This is what I'm looking for. The Strong's definition for, what is this? For inheritance. It reads, property, something inherited, occupancy, and an heirloom, generally an estate, patrimony or portion, heritage to inherit, inheritance possession. Well, let's look at this word heirloom right here. Heirloom, it reads a valuable object that has belonged to a family for several generations. That would be this book. Not just the book, but the words written in this book. It only belonged to us. It only pertained to us. Remember what Paul said? Who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants to give another law. Also, too. It says the services of God and the promises. Hey, that's the things written in this book that only belong to us, even so to this day. All right, and from the the word the root word to the word heirloom, it will be heir. Now let me see if I can find that real quick. Heir. A person legally entitled to the property or rank of another. On that person's death so we legally are entitled to their promises in this book what makes it legal because it was written within who will receive it is the Israelites to who pertain of the promises the adoption and the glory the earth the heathen for our inheritance the Lord said he would give us the kingdom to his flock his flock being ye men of Israel so it would be illegal for other nations of people, especially the white man, to receive these gifts and promises. It would be illegal. Because going back to this word heir, it reads a person legally entitled to the property. Who is the person legally entitled? Jacob. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. For the Lord's people, it's his portion Israel. So it would be against the law, illegal for other nations of people to receive the promises written in this book. Now, moving forward, we're going to go to the book of Revelation, chapter 5. Chapter 5, we're going to start at verse 9. 
and they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to Yahweh by the blood out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation. So this don't mean every tongue, nation, and people, though it said redeem us. And who would that us be? Ye men of Israel, the Lord's flock. He redeemed us, the men of Israel, out of every kindred, out of every tongue, out of every people, and out of nation, and out of every nation, out of every land that we were scattered to. So this ain't out to all people, but the Lord's men of Israel will be redeemed out of the places, out from among the people, wherever we were scattered to, and has made us unto our God kings and priests. That's rulership of the earth. And we shall reign on the earth. That's why going back, the Lord said what? Ask of me, I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thine possession. That's us being kings and priests on the earth that we shall reign on the earth. <clears throat> this was laid up um, for the Lord's portion, his people Israel, which should be the children of Jacob. Now, what is this referring to when we read Revelation Chapter 5, verse 10, 9 and 10. This is not referring to nothing new. This is actually speaking of an account that happened in the book of Genesis. Now, let's go there. Let's see whose blessing, whose birthright is it to reign on the earth. Let's go to the book of Genesis, chapter 27. <clears throat> and we're going to start at verse... We're going to start at verse 28. We're going to go down to 30. Therefore, Yahweh give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let their mother's sons bow down to thee. What is this? This is speaking of rulership or reigning on the earth. That's speaking of what? Being given the kingdom. The earth for our possession. It says, shall give thee the heathen for our inheritance. That's why, again, Isaac blessed Jacob. And it says, let people serve thee. Nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren. That's what? That's Jacob being given the heathen for his inheritance. Not that specific time, but this is the will of Isaac, who is ultimately Yahweh Shah. And Yahweh Shai and Isaac being a testator, the person who wrote this will, well, this will be the stuff that will take, that will go into effect after his death. That's why um, he came back and died so that, a hey, that all nations will bow down to us and serve us. Curse be everyone that curse of thee, and blessed be he that bless of thee. Who is Isaac speaking to? Verse 30. And it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob. And Jacob was yet scarce gone out from the presence of Isaac, his father, that Esau, his brother, came in from his hunting. So yeah, Jacob received the blessing that people would serve him, nations would bow down to him, that he would be Lord over his brethren, Esau, and that his mother's sons, the children of Edom, will bow down to us from generation to generation. That's what it's talking about, has made unto us our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. This talking about Jacob being given the crown way back then. We lost that inheritance going off from this word, discontinuing from this heritage, um, rejecting the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Well, him dying, that his blood will cover us and redeem us out from the places, out from the people we were scattered to. We are now eligible to receive of that inheritance, to reign on the earth upon regaining this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And moving forward, when we go to the book of John 14 and 13, whatsoever you shall ask of my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Who is the Lord talking to? He's talking to Israel. This is not to all people. It says, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Yeah, the Lord said, first seek the kingdom of heaven and all these things will be added unto you. So all we got to do is seek the kingdom. And that's done by um, searching out Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, 
seeking and learning of the Lord, walking in the ways of the Lord, acknowledging the Lord in all of our ways. <clears throat> and that would be added to us. Because when the Lord said, if he shall ask anything in his name, he will do it. What more can you ask for than the kingdom? The kingdom includes everything. Going back to the book of Luke 12 and 32. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Who is the little flock? The house of Israel. You my flock. The flock of my pasture are men. Ye men of Israel, you the Lord's flock. And it's his good pleasure to give you, to give us the kingdom, if we ask in his name. So, yeah, you ain't, what more can you ask for than the kingdom? That's why the Lord says, seek the kingdom and everything. All things will be added. <clears throat> and moving forward, what are those things that we will ask in his name? Well, going back to Romans 9 and 40, 9 and 4, who are Israelites to whom pertain of the adoption the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the services of Yahweh, and the promises. The kingdom is a promise. You can't ask for nothing more than the kingdom. The kingdom includes all things. The heathen for our inheritance. Because remember, what Isaac told Jacob, let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren. That's a promise promised to Jacob to the children of Israel. And what? The earth be given to us for our possession. The uttermost parts of the earth that means all of it now moving forward we're gonna jump to the book of Sirach chapter 17 verse 17 as soon as I can find it all right 17 and 17 for in a division of the nations of the whole earth he set a ruler over every people but Israel is the Lord's portion so all the nations of people the Lord set a ruler over them. He gave these other nations of people. He gave them their own gods. He gave them their own kings. But what? The Lord's portion is Israel. So while other nations got their own God and their own king, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, is God and king, Lord over Israel and Israel only. Yet yeah, the Lord created these other people, but the Lord is only claiming Israel for himself. Israel is the Lord's portion. The Lord ain't claiming other nations of people. Back to Deuteronomy 32 and 9 in the NLT. Jacob is his special possession. Yeah, the Lord possessed all people, but Israel is that, specific, is that special possession. That's the Lord's portion. That's what he takes glory in. Amos chapter 3 verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt. So what is the Lord saying to the children of Israel who was brought up from the land of Egypt? You only have I known of all families of the earth. Because what we just read, for the division of the nations, of all families of the whole earth, he set a ruler over them, over every people. He gave them their gods and kings. But Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is Lord and King over Israel. You only have I known of all families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. So, yeah, the Lord will only punish his people when they go off. Well, when you read in between the line, the Lord will only punish his people and he will only bless his people with the gifts, promises written in his book. You can't receive of the gifts and the promises if you can't receive of the punishment. The gifts of the promises are those who are being punished right now. I don't know if I said that right. The gifts and the promises are those who are being punished right now. Because the gifts and the promises, the promises written in his book, the promises can go both ways. So let me get this again. Who are Israelites to whom pretend of the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the promises of God and the promises. A promise ain't always got to be a good thing. The Lord promised to bless us if we hearken to his voice, followed the law, statutes, and commandments. And he also promised to curse us and bring us low if we disobey his voice. So the Lord said he will punish you for all your iniquities. That's a promise that the Christian church don't talk or know about. 
that's part of that promises. Promises can be good or they can be bad. The good promises are for those who are receiving of the bad promises right now. Moving forward to the book of Psalms 147 and 19. He sheweth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments to Israel. A judgments can be good or bad, but rather they be good or bad judgments. Only Israel will receive of it. See, these other nations of people, they just trying to receive the good judgments. They just want the good promises. Well, you can't receive the good if you ain't go through the bad. He have not dealt so with any nation. So the other nations of people, they don't know the Lord's judgments, whether they be good or bad. It wasn't given to them to know. It wasn't given to them to receive of. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Why is it saying praise ye the Lord? Because the Lord didn't deal with any other nation of people. He didn't show his word to any other nation of people. The word ain't just the law. Hey, the word includes the promises that pertaineth unto Israel. The Lord didn't show them the gifts and the promises because they wanted for them to receive. So the gifts and the promises, in other words, will be for those who receive the law. Other nations of people think they could just come receive the gifts and the promises. You was never given the law. So you are ineligible to receive of the Lord's inheritance. You know, <clears throat> and, but Israel, who was given the law, for them will also be given the blessings. Now, as we get close to finishing, um, we're going to read a little more. And I seem to have missed one. Let's read this word inheritance. It is the practice of receiving private property. What's private property? It begins with this book. And that includes everything that's written therein. That includes the land, Israel, Jerusalem. But let's continue. Titles. What are those titles? Going back to Revelation chapter 5, uh, verse 10 has made unto us our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Kings and priests, rulership of the earth, being crowned, that's given to Jacob. The debts, well, what are our debts? Our transgressions. And we receive uh, punishment for that. That's why the Lord said of all families of the earth, you only have I known. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquity. Reads the entitlements. What are the entitlements? The things we are, we are entitled to. The adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, a, hey, those are entitlements. The privileges, a, hey, the gifts of forgiveness and repentance, because we know uh, Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, it might be twelve and sixteen, um, that Esau was rejected from repentance. It reads rights, obligations upon the death of an individual. So yeah, the rights, the obligations, a, hey, all this stuff is legally specified to the Lord's people. All right, so we're going to read a little more something real quick. Go back to that web page I had popped up if I can find it. We're going to go down. It reads, it's not just about the money. Estate battles are where families act their worst. And where do most people get the most heated? They completely lose their cool and act like brute beasts. Well, when we reject them and tell them that the gifts and the promises in this book is not for them, people act they worse. Feelings of favoritism, being ignored, unresolved insults, and long, summary family arguments, bubble to the top, and family fights over the inheritance. Yeah, because what we claim it, we claim it to be the Lord's favorite, his chosen. But let's continue. This is where you hear things like this. You are always dad's favorite. Well, let's see who is the heavenly father's favorite. So again, at family disputes over the inheritance, you will hear you are always dad's favorite. Well, our heavenly father had a favorite. But thou Israel are my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. So Jacob, Israel, that's the Lord's favorite. Furthermore, um, proven that the Lord does has a favorite. All nations before him are as nothing. They are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. 
the Lord has no care in the world for you other nations except Israel, whom he had chosen, whom he claimed for himself. Because remember, Israel is the Lord's portion. The other nations got their God and kings. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is God and king over his people Israel, whom he chosen from the beginning. And then you might also hear, why would mom leave that to you? You were never there for her. So yeah, why would the Lord leave his inheritance for other people when he clearly said they are nothing? They are less than nothing. And then also going to the book of Romans 9 and 13. Romans 9 and 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved. Yeah, you were always dad's favorite. Jacob was always the Lord's favorite, but Esau have I hated. So yeah, why would the Lord leave his inheritance up for Esau when he always hated Esau? Then in Apocrypha, the Lord says, I hated many things, but nothing like him. Pointing to a specific man. And as we finish up, we got a couple more things we're going to jump to. But yeah, inheritance, you know, it's not always about the things at hand to receive. You know, there's a family fuel. And this family fuel is going to be talked about a little more under sibling rivalries. As parents, passing can heighten existing rivalries between children. What's that existing rivalry? That's the most heated debate when they find out they're rejected. Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. And the two-thirds of our people that's trying to save Esau, Edom, and include them on this inheritance. Yeah, you thought racial tensions died down. You thought that racism was diminished in the streets of America. Well, bring out this word with its proper understanding. You're going to see racism and hatred and discrimination went nowhere. All right, struggling through grief can often trigger unresolved issues between brothers and sister what's this unresolved issue it's that struggle between jacob and esau this is a time and place where siblings decide to settle old scores once and for all and that's the time we in right now the time of judgment we settle in the score with our brother esau once and for all telling them that they're rejected from the promises in his book and they're going to receive damnation and let's get more on this sibling rivalry, this unresolved issue between brothers. Well, scriptures point at Jacob being the Lord's favorite, all the other nations being nothing, the Lord hating Esau, but let's get this sibling rivalry, this unresolved issue, Genesis 25 and 22, and the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I dust? So Esau and Jacob was fighting in the womb and she went to inquire of the Lord. Jump it down to verse 26. Going to get 25. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. What's significant about Esau? He's not white. He's red. He was a redneck, and the Lord hates him. Going back to Romans uh, 9 and 13, wherever that's at. Yep, as it's written, Jacob had by love, but Esau hated. Now moving forward, we're Genesis 25 and 26. And after that came his brother out. And his hand took hold on Esau's heel. And his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bared him. So that struggle carried over into this reality. That struggle in the womb is carried over and playing out in the earth to this day. And it's evident when we got these disputes over the things written in this book. That was only laid up for Jacob. <clears throat> now more on that sibling rivalry these unresolved issues between brothers let's get genesis 27 and 41 and esau hated jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him why because the lord always loved jacob and esau said in his heart the days of mourning for my father are at hand then will i slay my brother jacob so esau got unresolved issues Esau got unresolved issues when it comes to Jacob. That's that perpetual hatred. Ezekiel chapter 35. That's why they hate us to this day. Because the birthright and the blessing that we was blessed with. That's why they kill us in the streets. That's why they still want to kill us. That's why they're going to try to exterminate us in Jacob's trouble. Jacob's trouble 
ain't a new thing in the book of Jeremiah that spoke about right here. Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning my father are at hand. Did not slay my brother Jacob. Esau been slaying us, but he's about to slay us in Jacob's trouble. Only the two thirds of our people because the Lord going to reserve that remnant, the elect. Now finishing up, we're going to come to this paragraph. Disinheriting the black sheep of the family. Who's the black sheep of the family? Esau eat them, but more like he the red sheep. Specific children and family members may be purpose purposefully left out the will or trust. Who was purposefully left out the will, left out the trust? Well, it would be Esau Edom. And let me see if I can just do something real quick without taking up too much time. Hebrews 12 and 16, Lord willing. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. So yeah, Esau said of his birthright, he was left out of the will. For you, for you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. So when he would have received the things written in his will, written in his book, he was rejected. Yeah, he was left out. For he found no place of repentance, meaning there was no turning back. There was no way that Esau Edom would ever be accepted again though he saw that carefully with tears. Moving forward, sometimes the parent believes that the beneficiary is financially set. Let me see. That was pretty much all I wanted, that Esau was left out. And then when we continue, going back to Genesis 25, we're going to go to verse 34. It reads that Jacob gave Esau. <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils. And he did eat and drink and rose up. And with his way, does Esau despise his birthright? What's your birthright? That's your heritage. That's, that's your lineage. So Esau despised his heritage. And when I look for this word heritage, you know, see property that must be 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 inheritance to, to be inherited. Well, going back to the scriptures, Esau despised his birthright. Esau despised his heritage. So he was left out of the will to receive none of the promises living in his book. He would be the black sheep, the red sheep who went off. You know, somebody who rejects their family, then after the family member die, they they come back thinking that they could receive those promises. Well, that's Esau. Let's get this. Other times it is because the child is estranged from the family as a result of arguments or other reasons. Why was Esau estranged? Well, he sold his birthright to Jacob. Because Esau said, behold, I'm at the point to die, meaning what well, he was dead hungry. And what profit shall his birthright do to me? So Esau saw the birthright of no importance. Thus he despised it and he sold it. And then he was rejected from receiving the blessing. There was no turning back for him, though he saw it with tears. So yeah, the Lord has an inheritance. He got a people who these promises are stored up for, and we about to receive it off promises. Lord willing, we are that number. But it starts with this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding by receiving the Holy Spirit, who will teach us all things, store up our pure minds by way of remembrance. And these other nations, they left out. So when they fight with you, when they arguing, when they wanna condemn you and speak evil and wickedly about you, that's the same thing that go on in these family disputes, these sibling rivalries, unresolved issues among the family. They just fighting, trying to receive of these promises. And they know that this is a high value estate. This inheritance is high value. So they realize that they're ultimately fighting for their survival, fighting for their life, fighting for salvation. That's why they get so heated. Because they're not just fighting over $20, they're 
we fighting over an everlasting salvation. And these nations want it. That's only laid up for Jacob. So why would you share your, share your inheritance with these other nations? Who on the earth would do that? Nobody in their right mind. The Lord left his inheritance, his will, to his people Israel. Hey, that's it for this lesson here. Lord, what a new Zedifying. Till next time, Shalom.